Um, here's the list of the autopsies that we've done, either at UCLA or at the Palo Alto VA Hospital. And TTR amyloid was a common theme in uh, six of these of the eight. Of the 11 total that's ever been done and reported in the history of people doing supercentenarian autopsies, it was one in Japan, one in um, Europe, uh, and one on the East Coast in Pennsylvania um, of Sarah Naus, who was 119, the oldest American that we know about. Uh, amyloidosis appeared in several of those as well. So Alma Corning and uh, George Hartman are people whose autopsy we did. George Johnson, um, that's the time of his funeral. Uh, I'm asked frequently when I get to know the family to speak at funerals. Uh, and that's some of the results of his autopsy. We did William Seegers. He was only 106, what we call a quasi-supercentenarian. Um, and uh, you know, some of his results uh, we did a gentleman actually in Cali, in the country, South America, of Colombia, and uh, uh, he was able to walk around. Uh, I'm not going to go through these details of that experience, but it was fun uh, bringing samples back into the United States, uh, all these tubes of liquid with material in them. Uh, uh, in Houston, the port of entry, they were kind of suspicious. What is that stuff? I said, it's for scientific research, and so I, I had to have paperwork in Spanish and in English to do that. And uh, uh, this was the gentleman uh, from Colombia who was chief of pathology. We did a lady who was 109 and a half when she passed away, a uh, doctor um, you know, here from UCLA and I worked on Alzheimer's disease where she was a control. I was invited to speak at her funeral, and... Uh, uh, there's a lot of, this is the neuropathologist, Harry Vinters, who we work with, and that's the sections of her brain. Uh, and acknowledgments for her. And then the oldest person in the world uh, at the time, uh, this is her birthday party when she was 115 uh, in April um, at her nursing home. And... Uh, all the exciting um, you know, letters from the president and his wife and from the mayor of Los Angeles. And she's in the Guinness Book of World Records, the 2010 edition, in a couple of places. And the results of her autopsy are now completed. Uh, and I can report that she also had cardiac amyloidosis. Some normal tissues. This is her brain cutting. Um, and she had a... Alzheimer's disease um, problem in her brain pathologically, but no clinical signs of amyloid. So those are the results of the microscopic. She had a lot of incidental findings. Terrible uh, gallbladder stones because she loved bacon. In fact, she was proud of telling everybody she liked her bacon extra crispy. But to prove that it was the type of TTR amyloid. We go through a lot of immunohistochemical staining after we do Congo Red, and it's positive for the TTR and negative for all these other ones. And uh, I'm not gonna spend any more time uh, on the funeral, and I had to give a talk at that as well. Uh, she's buried in a location in the Englewood Cemetery next to uh, the black former mayor of Los Angeles, Tom Bradley. She had a, what I call the Baptist Mafia, lots of people uh, singing hallelujah at her funeral. And I'm not going to spend time on the accomplishments of our foundation, um, but just to give a shameless plug that our next uh, activity is going to be, what can we do about amyloidosis? If this is really a common endpoint and you're not going to go through that glass ceiling, um, Stan Primer at 6.30 this morning sent me an email uh, saying I had to tell the group that we're working on that. There are means, a company in Cambridge, Massachusetts uh, called FoldRx to try to stabilize this molecule. And there's another group in London, Pepe's and Hawkins, that have an institute just for this that are looking at diagnostic techniques uh, for looking not at autopsy but early on about what is your level of amyloid in your blood vessels? And, well, why not just deal with the amyloid itself and 
There are people worried about that. Um, uh, there's a group meeting uh, in a conference November 19th through the 22nd in Fort Lauderdale in Florida, and uh, uh, Sahir Paul is going to look at special antibodies against the amyloid, because you don't want to just dissolve any old protein just because you want to get rid of this one. You have to be very specific, because you'll dissolve good proteins if you just give a, a general uh, method for that. So, okay. 30 seconds. Okay, future steps. We're going to go and visit all these people, and we're going to get DNA samples from them to do a complete sequence. We're uh, collaborating with a company in San Francisco Bay Area uh, called Halcyon. And uh, this could be... Um, pardon? Halcyon Molecular is their full name. They're in Redwood City. And um, they are a startup company that is developing a, a new method for doing complete sequencing at a very cheap price, even less than the $1,000 that Ray Kurzweil was talking about. And here are some of Kurzweil's numbers, that, and escape velocity as a concept, compliments of Aubrey de Grey here, um, that singularity may happen maybe in 2044. Some of the other numbers were a little bit more optimistic, but we're crossing this bridge. We have to be here long enough for the singularity to happen whenever it happens. And for that purpose, we need to do the phase one, bridge number one. We have to take our vitamins and make sure we're here. Thank you, Stephen. Yes. <laughs> I, probably, yeah, Aubrey wants right, to ask a question. Aubrey. All right, yeah, I, I want to congratulate you on restricting yourself to 91 slides. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, oh, by the way, uh, you know, I, I, was to, I was told to shrink down by 200 <laughs> slides down to 91. <laughs> so, um, I, I know there's a lot of people here who are not medics, including people who are scientists, and I, I think we'd really like to understand a little bit better about how you actually determine whether a cause of death when you do an autopsy. How do yes. you know that there's been a cause of death? Yes. Um, and how do you know that TTR amyloidosis was the main cause of death? As a major contributor, um, I haven't had time to respond to your email question about this in detail, but just as a quick overview, multiple things go wrong at the same time. Okay. Uh, we have 10 different organ systems, each of which has different kinds of tissues that are in different stages of falling apart. You know, think of uh, 10 rubber bands that you are stretching simultaneously. As soon as one of the critical path rubber bands snaps, then there are catastrophic failures that accumulate. And that's one after like our another. schedule. So I've been uh, asked if we can discuss this oh. at a, there'll be a perfect time to discuss this, but our rubber band okay. is snapping right now. Okay. So thank you. All right. Okay. Thank you.